video is about theories of democracy because the question really of the week or of the next couple of classes is how do we arrive kind of at our constitution? How do we arrive at our form of government? Um, and as you know from the first week, just briefly, we have what's called a representative democracy. But we didn't start off like that, so to speak. So, how do we get there? Well, today's video is going to really talk about kind of the founding theories of democracy and the philosophers that kind of influenced our founding fathers um, to get us to where we are now. Alright, here we go. The cool thing about the two guys we're going to talk about today is the fact that the ideas and the writings they came up with back in the 17th century um, are still around today. Um, if you ever turn on the news and watch the quibbling back and forth and everything they're quibbling about all stems and boils down to the basic ideas that these two guys came up with um, and talked about and actually argued against each other back in the day. So, you always ask, how does this pertain to me, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, this pertains. And you're going to find out just exactly how um, coming up. All right, we find ourselves in the 17th century in a period known as the Enlightenment. Hopefully you can use some of your prior knowledge to help you figure out what that is. But basically, it was a period of a lot of human advancement, not just in science and medicine, or literature, but also in political thought and philosophy. Um, and that's where we find our two guys, uh, John Locke and Thomas Hobbes. All right, now we're going to start with John Locke. John Locke, all right, devised this idea called the natural state, okay? He actually really called it the tabula rasa, or the blank slate, meaning that when you're born, all the ideas that you have about the world, your notions, your ideals, your motivations, everything, your beliefs, okay? They don't exist, okay? You're born blank, okay? And over the course of your lives, you start adding things onto your slate that kind of define who you are, so to speak. Um, and because of that, and here's where some plagiarism exists, John Locke argues that because people start off on a blank slate and their ideas are formed over time, that every single person on the planet, every single human being, is inherently equal. Okay? Because we all start off equal. Alright? Now what does that sound familiar like? Well, it has a lot to do with um, what we'll see later on in the Declaration of Independence because Thomas Jefferson and a lot of the Founding Fathers were incredibly influenced by John Locke. Okay? But John Locke didn't just come up with the tabula rasa or the blank slate theory either. Alright, the blank slate okay. theory influences John Locke's later writings on the second treatise of government. Okay? Because of the blank slate, because human beings are born equal, at least in according to his philosophy, then because we're born equal, we should be treated equally as well. Okay, and during the time period in which John Locke lived, the 17th century, the 1600s, England was under monarchical rule. Okay, they had a king, the king made all the laws, the king was an absolute power, therefore the citizens really didn't have much say-so in what they could and couldn't do, and John Locke had a problem with that. So, John Locke's solution is, hey, you know, monarchy's fine, um, he wasn't really opposed to a monarchical rule. Um, he was just opposed to the idea that they had un a basically unlimited power and power over people. Okay, and that's where the state of nature comes in. Okay, human beings need to live in the greatest extent of a state of nature as they possibly can. Okay, um, obviously not so much that chaos reigns, but in so much that they're allowed to pursue their own lives, to be happy, and to have certain liberties. Okay, that should sound like something else we're pretty familiar with, too. Um, that's kind of what John Locke thought. And that's where Thomas Hobbes comes in in direct contradiction, I don't want to say contradiction, opposition to what John Locke is preaching. So stay tuned for Thomas Hobbes. Alright, 
Thomas Hobbes. Okay, Thomas Hobbes was really more known for his literary works. He was a very prominent author. Um, he was also older than John Locke. That has something to do with it. Okay, he's older than John Locke. Okay, John Locke's born after he's born. Thomas Hobbes was born in 1588, and he was really known for his literary works. Okay, but heading into the 17th century, England's going to start having a civil war. Okay, and considering the fact that Thomas Hobbes is a royalist, meaning that he agreed with what the king was doing, he had to leave because his life was in danger. He went to Paris, but it's around this time where he's fleeing to Paris that John Locke's becoming famous. Okay, with his blank slate theory and his uh, belief in natural rights and the natural state. And Thomas Hobbes says, John Locke, you're, you're crazy. Okay? If people lived in a state of nature, okay, without any guidelines, any rules that they had to follow, without them being under the force of supreme control, then it's kind of like that video I showed, um, the movie montage I showed in the first video. Chaos. And do you really want that, John Locke? Okay? Because Thomas Hobbes says, no, we need more control. Control is good. Control keeps you um, steady, so to speak. So, he's the complete opposite of John Locke. Okay? He likes what the crown's doing. He believes in control. And he's really kind of against all these enlightened thinkers. Remember, he's old school. Okay? He's alive during this time period, but he's kind of at the at the front lines. Okay, John Locke comes a little bit later, and you can think of if Thomas Hobbes had to call John Locke something that you could probably relate to, he'd probably call John Locke a hippie. And nowadays, John Locke would be considered insane by um, what we think now. Okay, the crazy guy in the basement shouting about government conspiracies and stuff like that, that would probably be John Locke. Okay, because he's pretty extreme. All right, but you have Thomas Hobbes way here. John Locke way here to completely different ideologies of the political spectrum, okay? And it's funny that it exists back then because that's kind of how things are now, okay? Hobbes, liberal, Democrat, war control. John Locke, conservative, less government intrusive, Republican. So you kind of see how these two extremes, they're still... The philosophies are still intact today, just in um, more moderate terms. But it's all from the same um, mindset, really. That just about wraps up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a, mo it's kind of a minor video, um, setting the stage for the next one, okay? But these two theorists are pretty important in, in setting the stage for early American history, the rebellion, the Declaration of Independence, and then the Constitutional Convention, okay? So... Hops, block.